Hello there everybody, this is Alex from Hardcoin Guides bringing my guide for Luigi's Mansion on Hid Mansion difficulty going for the A rank run and today is the third part or we can call it the third area as they do in the game we now currently have 15 out of 50 of the booze so we're definitely gonna have to try to you know pump that one out a little bit faster and there's a way to do that and the way of doing that happens to be the boss of this area who, in fact, actually kind of ruined my, like, complete gold portrait run. So we'll deal with him when we get to him. So, in area three, you want to come back outside and then water the plant one more time. And then in the next area, or as soon as the blackout happens, or after, you can wait either way. I recommend waiting until after the blackout, but I don't remember exactly when I did it. Then area four is when you come back and you finish off the plant. So... For those that didn't know that that was there, well, maybe hopefully now you do. So, yep, you have at least three different areas to go through to get that. And I think that the blackout and the area four might be different. I mean, granted, they're both named area four, but I don't know if there's any specific reasoning whether or not that, you know, one will work or one won't. So, who knows? Anyway, coming out into the backyard, there's going to be four different plants. One of them happens to have a heart in it. These little floaty, ghosty things, they'll infinitely spawn until you clean out this room. And in my original playthrough, the original recorded playthrough, I think it was, or one of them, I don't remember which one, for a while, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't know you could actually clean this room out, like... You know, get the light and on and everything, but you can if you collect every ghost that's mainly the ceiling ghosts, or, you know, kill them off with elemental abilities like I do here, then I think, like, after three or four of them disappear, then you pretty much get a chest. And the reasoning being why I thought that this room was unclearable was because... You know how most of the time, like, when you go to a specific area, say, like, a certain floor or something, and then you finish off every ghost in that floor, then the game's like, okay, so every room is lit up. You know, even rooms that probably didn't have ghosts in them. So, there's that. Or, or you'll, li or you'll talk to a toad and light up a specific area. Well, nope, this one you have to actually collect all the ghosts. You don't have to, it's completely optional, but, hey, money is money in this game, so... Why not take it and, you know, take its course? For those wondering why exactly I haven't been uploading these, I've been distracted with playing games recently and just kind of working on other videos, too. Not really recording anything, but just more like rendering and editing and all that great stuff. And I also got myself in a bit of trouble, so, you know, had to fix up that and... Yeah, still kind of worried about later on when September comes around and I have to deal with more stuff that's related to me getting in trouble. <laughs> so, yeah. I'd... We all make mistakes, folks. That happens. But we'll see what happens to me, I guess, huh? Pray that I don't get a fucking... I don't get uh, put away for a while. <laughs> no, I didn't do anything, like, super bad, but, you know. Like I said, we all do stupid shit, and I do stupid shit that I don't even know that I do. So, welcome to my life. But, that being not regarded here at all, because now we're talking to Toad, has no relevancy. Uh, upon completing this room, well, you don't even need to complete this room, actually. This, this, this next room, the weightlifting room is, or rec room, my bad, is ready. It should be open to you, regardless. No, actually, wait, you have to go... And do the whole thing in the well to get Mario to, you know, talk, or see Mario where he's at and then get that ghost to spawn and get the key. And I come in here and there's, of course, the blue ghost. Now, the reason why I saved the game before I came in here is because of said blue ghost. So, that was why. Now, this is Biff Atlas. He's kind of a pain in the ass, uh, especially for getting, maybe he messed up my gold run. I don't know. Maybe he might have been the one because I don't remember ever actually catching him completely. Yeah, it's hard to say. Now, again, remember, folks, that taking damage even during boss fights like this don't actually count toward your gold portrait. It's the, basically, the mega bosses, or whatever you want to call them, the, the main, main bosses that you're not supposed to take more than 10 damage for to get gold. Somehow, I 
Okay, so I did get a gold portrait on him, luckily enough. Uh, so, yeah, somehow I think I clipped through the weight right there, the bar, and I don't know how I managed that, but okay. So, essentially, after you hit him, I think, what is it, three times with these punching bags, he's catchable, and then after, if you mess up again, he'll go right back to weightlifting like nothing happened, and then you could hit him again with another punching bag, and essentially, knock him on the ground. So, of course, in here, there's going to be a boo, but in order to get back into the other hallway, or the original hallway, the first floor hallway, we need this key right in the treadmill. Do you need the key? No. Actually, funny enough, I think it might be one of the ones that are less mandatory for key-wise. Maybe. I, I mean, because sometimes you'll get a key for a room that you don't even need to necessarily go into. So... I don't think that probably is like the only one, but it definitely helps to have that little shortcut there for you whenever you want to get back to here, specifically, or, you know, go upstairs, because going around to the backyard and coming into this room and that room takes more time, and it just, it's just a big waste, folks. It's just a big waste of time, honestly. So that should be everything here. I'm just pretty much just cleaning up at this point. Nothing really to see here at all. Just grabbing whatever I can. And then, of course, if you come out here... Uh, this was actually something I found out by watching the speedruns, where you can actually shoot the water through the floor and hit the fire above, uh, pretty much on the next floor that's in that room. The, I think it's the tea room. Yeah, and if you hit that, then it will disappear before you get up there. So it's it's just a time saver. It's kind of like in Mario 64 when you're skipping stairs, you know, when you're going up to, I think, what was it, the th second floor? And then you can just, like, clip through some of the stairs to get up there faster. I mean, it's one of those things that doesn't really affect the game too much, really. Just there for you. It saves some time. I mean, you're, you're going to do this anyway, but, you know, people have found that, hey, I can save time doing that, so. I mean, granted, you could probably just walk up there and then shoot it with water, but I, I don't know. I don't know if it actually saves time or not, but if it does, it does. I, I just saw that on a speedrun thing. I thought it was cool. I'll, I'll be like, hey... I want to be cool too, I want to try it out, so then I tried it out and failed, but <laughs> that happens a lot, huh? Okay, so now we're going into the tea room, and then before you ever come up here, there's going to be some money in there. There should be some money in that little lamp thing there. Uh, if not, then there might be like a heart or something, but typically there is money. And yes, a gold mouse just spawned in a room that a mouse can be activated in. Yes, that 20% chance for a gold mouse was... Rather really lucky, I mean, I hardly ever come back to the tea room because it's such a small room. Like, when it comes to catching, like, you know, the random mice, it's a lot easier, I think, to catch them in the hallways than it is smaller rooms because you don't really ever go back there enough unless you know specifically that there's a mouse there and you want that mouse. I think upon leaving the room, instantly, like, upon leaving the room and then, you know, come back in, I think probably more likely triggers the randomness to come out. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if this is, like, Kingdom Hearts level of bullshit. Or not, where you have to, you know, leave two rooms and then come back, and there it is. I don't know if that's exactly what it is, but, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not sure. I've, I've left a room before I came back, and I think one might have spawned, so that's just my own justification for it. Of course, dealing with these guys can be a pain in the ass. I mean, that's the whole point of them. They're just grabbing you, and they're just really annoying. Especially with the fact that you have these stupid plates flying all over the place and kind of hitting you. And then you got these, you know, freaking tablecloth things there too that just kind of get in the way and when you're sucking things up and also whenever you're on the ceiling it makes it kind of harder to catch ghosts granted for like speedrun sake I guess I heard it was easier to catch ghosts that way but not in my case I mean for me it wasn't really easier it just it was just more annoying because I have to deal with the fact that I'm upside down and I have to keep you know changing my flashlight every so often so that's just me just being a complete dunce I I could have, I could have honestly easily gotten that, but I didn't. Also, um, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I'm like 90% sure. I'll say that I'm like 90% sure that there's no blue ghost in here. I, I, I highly believe that, but I can't be proven wrong. There's only I think 15 that spawn in the entire game, and I think we have, who knows, most of close to all of them maybe. I, I'm not really sure. I don't even think there's any downstairs besides the first two rooms that are in the basement area. And that's all I can really think of. I think everything else is just... Probably not even a mouse. Probably just, you know... Booze and stuff. 
And upstairs, I think, has... Mm, yeah, it's got a... No, it don't. I don't think it has a blue ghost or even a, a you know, gold mouse. I don't think so. I think, like, most of the main rooms, like, the main first two hallways, kind of, uh, you know, rooms in that area typically have, like, the speedy spirits and the gold mi mice. I, I don't know exactly why. I mean, maybe they thought that, you know, having 10 mice and 15 speedy spirits was good enough, I guess. I could be... I'm not really sure. So, before you grab the ice ability, this is something I should have specified earlier. The reason why I didn't grab it is so I can get this guy first. He's weak to water, so, you know, having that already available and not having to run all the way back downstairs just to go get it again, just to kill him off and get more money, I felt like just saving time just keeping the water for the time being because I knew he was there. And of course, I think right now what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the fire so that way I can go to the, what do you call it? Uh, what, it's this room right here. Uh, I'll come up with a name in just a minute. Maybe. Ah, the Astral Hall. Okay. So upon entering here, this is why I had Fire Force. So that way I just get this over with. And then I'll head back. I'll trek back, get the Ice ability. And then go take out Miss Petunia, who's in the shower. And she's, she used to be really hard for me to catch. But after learning the flip trick, you know, or not flip trick. What are you going to call it? The vacuum trick thing where you pretty much just, you know, keep letting go of the stick every 10 HP. Then after learning that ability, it's like, this is nothing anymore. Like even Biff Atlas, who used to give me so much troubles. And if if you guys were ever to, or or have seen my main channel, uh, on my main channel I did a Luigi's Mansion playthrough way back in the day. I think it was like back in like 2014. You can probably totally tell... That my skill as a Luigi's Mansion player has definitely probably skyrocketed. I haven't watched that Let's Play in a while. It's probably stupid and boring anyway, but hey, you know, that was me back then. So nowadays it's just more, sometimes more relaxed and just trying to, you know, get through things and be as informational as I possibly can, which I don't really tend to get that across very well half the time, but hey, I, I try. I try, folks. I really do. And if it's a game that, you know, I think needs it really badly. Granted, when it comes to, you know, being informational, it's typically just pointing out the obvious that people probably just overlook. Which, not saying everybody does, but there probably are people out there that technically do overlook things. So, I'm here to essentially specify that and probably give you random numbers that you'll never need to know in your life. And that's what's great about my Luigi's Mansion guide, is just... Random numbers that nobody really needs. <laughs> you know what I mean? For the most part, you can figure out all this crap on your own. This is really not that hard. You can look up, like I did, just like locations of Speed Spirits, just to be on the safe side and know exactly where all the ones were at. Alright, here we go. So, I know there's a better specific way of shooting this, I think, or something. There's like a specific place you need to stand. And it's, I don't know. I... I, what I say for this, if you're not speedrunning the game, just try to get the orb as far left from the moon as you probably can, and then go for a shot that way, like I did here. That's what I do, typically. Lining up your shot's really annoying, but I always feel like the moon is... Or like when you shoot the ball, it, it tends to go more to the right than it does anywhere else, so that makes me think that the moon's probably more likely to the right, or maybe the shot just dress off in space. I don't know, man. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I've been watching, uh, this is just completely off topic. I've been watching Based Shaman videos recently. He's pretty interesting for the most part. I mean, I, I don't tend to watch all his videos, but he does videos about things that I am interested in listening him talk about. And I, I did a while back watch him talk about Dan Schneider, and that's how I found him first. And then he came back up again, and he was talking about Christian, and I was like, okay, yeah, you know, I've been kind of watching some of the Christian animated series stuff recently. You know, I just want to, I guess I'll check these out. I mean, he's talking good about him, you know. He's talking about all the bad stuff he did, but, or bad things that happened to him. But uh, based shaman it tends to be more nicer about things. And, you know, at first it's, like, hard to believe that he actually cares about Chris, but 
after watching him for a little while, it kind of seems like he does. You know, I mean, maybe a little bit. Like he just is concerned that you know, or upset that these bad things happen to such a person like that. But then again, Chris is definitely not a uh, noble knight himself. But hey, you know, when you do something wrong, you do something wrong. So you tend to try to not overlook that and just, well, you know, I wouldn't say you know justly basically judge a person just by that action but you know because there's plenty of people I know that have been to jail or been in major trouble and you know they got out of jail and they tend to be okay people or whatever you know silly stuff like that and I think Chris probably is he's probably been arrested I don't even know <laughs> maybe I I think he has I know he did like a hit and run thing where he actually hit a person and then they took off him and his mom I guess or something so, like I said, he's definitely not up there in terms of being a great guy, but, you know, some of the shit that happens to him, I don't think he deserves all of it. That's what I'm trying to say. And luckily, there's people out there that kind of give a fresh take on Christian Western Chandler, so. <laughs> of course, you come to a freaking, you know, hardcorean video with me in it, and immediately all you hear is nothing but freaking Christian. Well,. Granted, if you went to my main channel and you watched my Sonic Adventure Let's Play I'm doing right now, you'd probably hear nothing but stupid memes and jokes and all kinds of just fun, silly things happening and talking about Undertale characters and very sexual things that we talk about. So, that's on there too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would probably like to talk about something I saw Undertale-related here, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave that one alone. I mean, granted, I know this is my my channel, basically, no matter what, and you know, I, I tend to try to be professional, but I think, uh, yeah, I, I think I should be more professional with something that tends to be more professional. Okay, so the reason why I didn't cut this out right here is because I actually ended up getting lucky enough to catch the Speed Spirit. This goes to show practically how long and how strong a speed spirit spirit can be and it's odd because sometimes whenever i go to catch a speed spirit i'll flash him like once he's gone you know but for some reason i don't know if it's just hidden mansion or what but i feel like hidden mansion kind of adds a little bit of extra defense to these ghosts that's a bad word of that's a bad way of putting it like defense isn't exactly what they have they just they tend to take more flash than they would naturally, I feel like. They can handle a, a, a small flash bigger, you know, a small flash better than they could have before. I don't think there is a gold mouse in this room. All I know of is a speedy spirit, so we caught that one. He wasn't too hard to catch. Again, if you do spot him and he gets away, you might want to go back to a previous save point. That way you can be on the safe side and be like, okay, now I'm going to go back, get him, catch him, save the game. And then catch Nana if you wanted. Uh, if you're going for gold portraits or whatever, then totally. Saving in this game is a godsend. And it definitely, definitely helps to save a lot. And especially, it, it's great. One thing that's great about this game is boos, actually. And how, like, every time you catch a boo, you have the option to save the game. I love that. I love that they actually incorporated that. It gives, you know, like, when you're on a long trek, you know... And then all of a sudden you come up to, I don't know, like the top floor or something. And like all the, you, granted there might be a, a mirror around, which there, sh there is. But maybe you don't know about it or maybe you don't know where it's at or whatever the case could be. Or you just don't want to go back to that specific room that a mirror is at. Which, mo okay, the top floor is probably a bad idea. Maybe the bottom floor, we'll say that. Bottom floor, you know, on the bottom floor, whatever. Basement floor. You know, there's barely any mirrors. It's like, how do I, I don't want to go back upstairs and... You know, take that long trek to go get a toad. And then you catch a boo, which might be kind of difficult, but you've got all the rooms cleared out. You know, they're relatively easy to get at that point when everything's clear, <laughs> thankfully. When everything's lit up, it's much easier. So, you know, catch him, save the game, and then no worries. You know, you could your power could go out after you, you know, you're fully saved it and everything. And then, bam, come back and I think you start back in the first area of the mansion like you first get in also quick note yes you can actually get the speed spirit to this one i get lucky on again 
Did you see how many flashes that one took? Again, these guys take... They can take some major damage. So whenever you get that... If you miss him the first time, and then you run around for... Let him run around for a bit, and then you get a nice, you know, stun, just leave it for a second, like you normally would with the Speedy Spirit, and then suck him up. Because as you saw what I was doing, I kept, you know, flashing him, and then trying to suck up as quickly as possible, because I was panicking. I was thinking, oh man, if he gets away, I'm screwed. Well, no, that's not the case. Also, you, uh, what I was going to say is, you can actually climb the ladder on the bunk bed. You just got to walk up to it, press A, you know, and you can climb up it. So if you, you know, wanted to get, I guess, closer to the Blue Ghost, if you could even hit it from that direction, I'm not sure. But if you wanted to get closer to him, or if you catch him on top of the bunk bed, and you need to get up there and get the money, because the money's not coming to you with the vacuum, you can climb up the ladder, and there you go. Also, a quick tip for those that don't know this little strategy. Uh, if you want to find the twins relatively easily, all you got to do is just, you know, use a vacuum, just suck up these boxes, or try to suck up these boxes, and if they vibrate and move around, then, well, there you go. That's where one of the twins is at. So for me, I like to go for the blue twin first. I think one of their names is like Orville. Neville and Orville, I think it is. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, this guy does not exactly count to your grade for gold portrait. The first one you catch does not count, I think. But if you catch... I don't know if it's... I don't know if it's the plain guy or what, but... I usually go for him second, so I don't know if that's the case. But this one's the one that counts. And notice how even though he had 92... He's got 92 health left, correct? Yep. Now watch this. So this was when I was thinking to myself, Oh no, I lost my gold portrait. That's not the case. This is when I came, ar uh, this is when I came across the theory that, Oh, maybe you only need to get 90 in one go. That's the peripheral. And bam. What do you know? I got the big pearl. Came up. And we were good, so I got Gold Portrait on the Twins. Yep, even though I lost about 8 of his health off the first go, but the game is so nice and lenient that they just said, you know, as long as you get the other 90 in one, 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 one grab, then you're fine. And I was thankful for that. I'm like, thank goodness for this. Oh, man, it's so amazing. But yeah, this is definitely proof right here why having all areas lit up is a great thing to have because then Boo's got pretty much nowhere to go. I mean, they can still hide and all that stuff, but they they definitely uh, they're, they're definitely going to be lacking in terms of trying to disappear. So, which which I I, I tend to like that though. I tend to like that fact that you can even have them out in the hallway and they can still take the massive amounts of damage that they deserve to take. So, oh yeah, boos are just malicious. They've been malicious, so you know, catching them ain't really a big deal. I wonder what happens if you actually try to, you know, when you zoom in with your Game Boy Horror and you click on something, you know, with A. I wonder what it would say if you clicked on that mansion portrait. I don't know. I'm not sure. So I think for this one, well, I caught the Speedy Spirit, obviously. That was a relatively okay, easy catch. Sometimes he can be a pain, and sometimes he's not. So that time he ba he let me get him, I guess, or something. And funny enough, I don't know if it was this playthrough or another one. But in one of my playthroughs, I know for a fact that out of randomness, uh, Slim Bangshot actually got hit by one of his own pool balls that he shot off himself. Because essentially, for those that didn't know, you're supposed to shoot at him yourself. And he got hit like three different times for him to activate the, the whole like, oh, my heart's out, I can, you know, you can catch me now kind of situation. And right now, oh yeah, he did hit himself, okay. So right now what I was doing is I was looking for any of the gold mice, cheese, around... So I can be on the safe side and make sure that, you know, I got it. I guess also, if you hold one of the pool balls before he shoots them, or before they disappear or land on the pool table, whatever, basically disappear and, you know, teleport to the table, uh, you can actually keep it with you and then get the next shot. So that's Slim. Slim's not that tough. He's optional, pretty much. But I think what comes up next might not be optional. Because I think in the projector room we get... I think Mario's glove, and you need all five objects to talk to Claire Boy and suck her up, and I think she gives you a key, I believe, so I don't think she's, I think she's mandatory, I mean, that would make sense, because you're going around on a fetch quest, you know, I mean, granted, yeah, most of the time fetch quests are relatively not mandatory, but 
I think for her, I think it probably was mandatory. So, of course, I'm just going to sit here and, you know, after we got to take care of that boob, just going to sit here and fan this room. This will take all about a few minutes, it feels like, sometimes. But we get that taken care of, and then as soon as I open the chest, it's going to be spawning a ton of money. So I'm just trying to suck up as fast as I can. We got ourselves a nice, big old diamond. So, at least that's what I'm sure it should be. Or Chaos Emerald, for those that are probably wondering. Like a, just, you know, already used up Chaos Emerald or something. No, it, it's probably more likely a diamond. I mean, come on, it has to be right. Am I that stupid? Uh, yeah, probably. I am pretty stupid, so. Which, I mean, there's no doubt. There's proof behind that. So here we go. Okay, so now we have to do the second gimmick of this game, which is... Shadow Puppetry, so essentially, you know, like, as you can see now, we're just trying to use the shadows from the projector to essentially catch these grapple ghosts, and the farther you are away from the projector itself, the more clear shot you can find, and the less bigger you look on the screen. One thing that, one tip I can give you is run around and try to group them up, and then hide in a corner, and then as soon as they get really close, then you suck them up, but you can always just do this, just wait for them to spawn, and... Well, you know, catch him that way. Sorry, folks. i tired for some reason. I don't know why. I'm basically wasting my week here just practically doing nothing. That's typically what happens. It's funny because, like, when when I'm at work, it's like, man, I really wish I had, like, a couple weeks off or just even a day off. And then as soon as I come here, like, as soon as I get my two weeks off or a day off, I waste it. I'm doing nothing. <laughs> and I need to stop doing that. I need to... I I've been telling myself recently like just freaking draw dude like just oh, yeah. just do some sketches or something just do something you know and then i did one kind of i did like a hand and i, I felt like i did it better than i do most of the time but that was as far as i got and then i realized the person i was wanting to draw wasn't actually a human character and was more of a skeleton kind of character thing and i was like well piss there goes that yeah, for those that are wondering, I have a lot of, I wouldn't really call them dreams, but I guess you can say that hopes and dreams, or goals even, you can call it that. And I have basically a plethora of things I want to do with my life, but whenever I go to do them, I'm never motivated enough, and I never get off my butt and I procrastinate a lot, which is, to some, basically just death itself. But, you know, I... I I try when I feel like it, and that's the problem, is, you know, feeling like doing anything. Which also comes into play with my work when it comes to, you know, sorry about my chair, when it comes to doing this stuff, like, you know, recording. So, sometimes you'll notice, like, I won't upload for, like, months or something, and it's like, well, that's because Alex is just lazy. Alright, so luckily for you guys, well, that's kind of mean to say that, isn't it? No, 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 don't worry. I only say that just because, but what I'm trying to get across is, thankfully for myself as well, I edited out the Clairvoya talking because that thing goes on for quite some time, so I saved you guys and myself the trouble of having to sit through it. So I'm not saying like, oh, you should be thankful, you know, no, you can skip. You, if, if I didn't edit out, you guys can just skip ahead if you wanted, there's nothing you should be thankful about for this channel. Unless you enjoy the content and you're like, you know, hey man, this is good content. I thank you for making it. And it's like, oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> Even though like literally anybody else can make this, but you know, to each their own, I guess. And I think I'm mincing up my words here. Yeah, probably. Uh, I, I might be confusing people by what the heck I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is I do pretty much what anybody else has done on the internet, but if you enjoy my content, well, you enjoy my content. And, you know, same thing with me. Like, whenever I watch somebody that I like, it's like, well, yeah, a million people can play Resident Evil, but, you know, there's something specific about the people I watch play it or play a specific game that I enjoy. So, you know, that's what I think when it comes to this platform called YouTube is even though there may be a lot of people here uh, you know, doing the same things. There's always 
kind of like a, a diamond in the rough, I guess you could say. There's always somebody out there that you might like better than others, so. Here we go, Safari Room. Okay, make sure that you have the ice ability here, because if you leave the room and come back, the ghost will respawn. Not the mouse, I'm just, well, the mouse will respawn if you mess up. You know, you just click on the trees again, not that hard. But, if you leave, I believe these guys come back. So, just make sure you have ice on before this happens. And no, having ice will not save you the trouble for the blue bosses fight. This right here kind of annoyed me. Because you can kind of, well, from my point of view, I thought I was, you know, actually getting the shine on the ghost. But as the game says, that's not correct. Survey says no. So anyway, yeah, there's one giant blue ghost. Actually, a blue ghost. I don't know what they're called. But uh, there's one on the left, one on the right, one in the middle, and then the garbage cans start to spawn. They're not that tough. Again, you can push them around. And funny enough that you can do that. I didn't think that I hit the banana, but I guess I did, apparently. So, there was that. Now I'm going to catch this guy. And just, again, watch out for banana peels. I don't know if you can actually burn them or not. Maybe you can. Or at least... Well, you know, freeze them, I should say. Yeah, if I ever, like, cut out out of nowhere, that's because I'm, I'm yawning. I I'm just dead tired. It's like 8 o'clock at night and I've just been exhausting myself boring so much about stupid shit so that, that that's me for you. I worry about literally everything I ever do or anybody else does and I never can just put the time to myself to be like hey just relax you know just enjoy what you got now. But that's why I think I hate my job so much is because I just can't relax myself you know, I can never get comfortable with anything I'm doing because I'm always worried about something. You know, it's like, oh man, if I don't do this now, you know, I'll never do it later. And stuff like that. Or, you know, by the time I'm like 30, you know, it'll be too late or whatever. I know that's basically just quitter talk and I'm then trying to work on stuff. But then I get myself to the point where as soon as I start working on something... I'll work on it so much that I'll just stop working on it for a while. So, like a game or something, you know? It's like just having, working on one is, you know, for a while. And then just all of a sudden just dissipate, you know? I just want to do something else. And that's what happens. And I think it's because I just have this odd way of doing things, I guess. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I was saying. I lost my train of thought like a minute ago. Well, anyway, the reason why I had that stuff cut out because I basically cut out me going to the safe point and then I captured the mouse on the way back, so I kept that in and shown you where he spawned. That way I give you guys proof that he did. Now, this right here, this took me a few tries to get correct, and I'm going to try to be as thorough and explanatory as I possibly can with this boss fight. There is a way you can actually one-shot this boss, I am not good enough at doing it. I don't know the exact angles at taking this boss down. But for those that don't know, or for those that do already know, you get to use ice. And you have to use ice to you know, shoot the booze. And then as soon as they get frozen, you suck them up. You pretty much have to grab Bulasis or have him walk toward one of the unicorn horns on either side, of, you know, both statues on either side. Have him get popped. And then essentially freeze these booze. Now, when he first pops into, like, all 15 or how many of there are, I'm not really sure. Uh, essentially, they're relatively slow. And then, like, once you get to, like, the last boo, he's really, really fast. So what I'm doing here is I'm standing in the middle, like, kind of, like, in the middle of that, that statue and moving toward the other one. I'm just, you know, holding down L as soon as I get close to the statue. And then as soon as I get, like, really close, I start uh, mashing the L button, I think it is. Well, I know it's the L button, but there's there's a problem with, I think, it, it's either mashing it or just... Yeah, I think, like, if you were to stand there without actually blowing ice out at first, then the ice ball will take too long to come out, and then if it does that, then it'll mess up and the vacuum will turn completely somewhere else. At least it was for me. So, when you get down to the last few bit of booze, the trick here that I found out, and then 
you know, figured out through other videos was like, oh, okay, actually, it does work. Uh, essentially, what you gotta do is pretty much just face away from Abu, and whenever you hear that, like, that evil laugh, like they're about to attack you, which, after a while of doing this, you'll be like, okay, he's gonna attack, because they have different kind of laughs. But there's one specific audio cue, as you saw earlier, or heard, you should have heard it earlier, maybe, I don't know. Uh, essentially, there's a specific, like I said, there's a specific audio cue where he's about to attack you. And then as soon as he's getting ready to attack, he'll charge right in front of you. Well, well you want to make him charge in front of you. So basically, just hold down R, you know, trick them into thinking, oh, okay, he's not using ice. So, you know, like that boo right there, I'm just going to charge right into him. Then immediately start walking backward and then hitting L. That way you can get him frozen while he's going straight into you. So that's essentially the trick that I found here that kind of typically works pretty well. But until you get to the last boo, and that's when it gets a little bit harder. Because as you can see right here, I'm getting picked on big time. That's what made getting the gold rank for this one so hard. Because, you know, first hit, you take like six damage. After that, you take another six. There goes your gold rank. And it just, it stinks, but... That's just, that's the way it is. That's just how it is on this bitch of an earth. <laughs> that's all it will say, so. Yeah, all right. So that takes care of Bulasis. Again, there goes all my gold portraits, which maybe one day, you know, if I'm feeling froggy enough, maybe I'll do like an all the gold portrait A rank run, which I kind of wanted to do here, but that didn't end up very well. I said maybe. doesn't mean I'm going to. Same thing with the Transformers Devastation playthroughs is, you know, I... I planned on doing it, and then I did Bumblebee, and then that just ended up in disaster, and I never came back since, and that's because I was stupid, and I just got bored of it, so, you know, if, if I push myself too hard to do something, it's not going to happen, and that's what sucks. So, like I said, I'm saying right now, maybe I will. Doesn't mean I will, doesn't mean that I'm not. It just means that, hey, it's up for grabs. Maybe one day I might think, like, I'm, I can try it, but until then, no. Might be like 30 years from now when I get that a shot. I don't know. Probably like next year or next month. God, I, I love this game. I love this game, folks. It's a great game. I love it a, a lot. But anyway, that's the end of Area 3. Next area is Area 4, which is the last area. But we're going to do the blackout separate from Area 4. It, it's still Area 4, but we're doing the blackout in a separate video by itself. So, anyway, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. So, as always, take care, everybody.